Hello and welcome to the online edition of Nightwatch for July 2024. My name is Bill coming to you from the Sudicum Planetarium here at Adventure Science Center in Nashville. And as always, we'll start off with the moon phases this month and find the moon will be new or invisible on July 5th. First quarter moon will be on the 13th, full moon on the 21st, and last quarter moon on the 27th of July. Looking at planets in our evening sky, we find that there are no planets that we can currently easily see in our evening sky, but we have a few in the morning sky. Looking in the uh, southern sky during the late evening and early morning hours, we can find the farthest planet you can see with your eyes, the ringed planet Saturn. Rising at around 11 p.m. during July, it is in the southern sky up fairly high, but not overhead, by around 3 a.m. The gibbous moon will be passing by the planet Saturn on July 23rd and the 24th. The planet Mars rises a few hours later uh, behind the planet Saturn at around 2.30 a.m. and is low in the eastern sky during the wee morning hours. The moon will be passing by the planet Mars on July 30th. And we also now have Jupiter rising in the morning sky just before sunrise, but it's catching up to the planet Mars and rising earlier and earlier, around 4 a.m. early in the month and by 2 a.m. by month's end. The thin crescent moon will be passing to the left of Jupiter before sunrise in the east on the early morning of July 3rd and again on the 31st. Looking in the sky, Facing toward the south in the evening at about 9.30 p.m., we find high in the western sky the constellation Bootes, the herdsman, marked by the bright orange-colored star Arcturus. And right next to Bootes, to the east or to the left, is the constellation Corona the Crown, or Corona Borealis the Crown, which I'll have more to say about in just a few moments. Nearly overhead, we do have the faint constellation of Hercules. Look for a very faint group of four stars that looks like the shape of a keystone in the middle of the constellation Hercules. This is one of the constellations that would be difficult to see under light polluted skies like the city of Nashville. You want to get far away from city lights to really see the sky as it should be seen. Rising high in the east, we do have three bright stars of summer that we usually refer to as the Summer Triangle. They are the stars Vega, Deneb, and Altair, which are part of the constellations Lyra the Harp, Cygnus the Swan, and Aquila the Eagle. And looking down toward the south, we do have the very famous constellation Scorpius, the scorpion during our summer season, marked by the bright reddish colored star named Antares, which actually means rival of Mars because so many people confuse it for the red planet. To the left or to the east of Scorpius, we find the constellation Sagittarius, the archer, marked by a number of very faint stars, again very difficult to see in light polluted skies. One group of stars in this constellation does resemble a giant teapot. Now going back to the constellation Corona Borealis, up high in the western part of the sky next to Bootes, we have an interesting story that's been getting some press this summer, and you may have seen these stories about a nova appearing in the sky this summer. Some of them are quite exaggerated. However, beware of these exaggerated stories online about a bright new star appearing in the night sky this summer. This nova is a recurring nova, which occurs about every 80 years. So we know it, it's about to happen, and we are expecting it to happen this summer. But don't confuse a nova with a supernova, which is the final titanic explosion that destroys some dying stars. This nova involves a double star system, where a giant red star is close enough to a white dwarf star where they're orbiting each other. And hydrogen gas from the giant star is being poured onto and building up around the denser dwarf star due to gravity. After about 80 years or so, this gas ignites in a thermonuclear explosion that blows the built-up gas away in a very, very bright explosion. The smaller star briefly becomes bright enough to be seen in our sky for just under a week. This one was first noticed in the year 1217, and the last time it blew was back in 1946. And again, we are expecting it to happen this year, as all indications are that the gas has reached the point where it's going to blow. 
so the next outburst is expected this year between now and September. We don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but we do believe it's going to be this summer between now and September. The star will be in our sky at about the same brightness as the star Polaris, or the North Star, which of course is not the brightest star in the sky, no matter what anyone else might tell you. We see here a close-up of the area of the sky of the constellations Corona Borealis next to Buotis the Herdsman. The faint constellation is hard to see in light polluted areas such as Nashville, so you want to get far away from city lights to see this faint constellation, which looks like a smiley face or a letter U shape right next to the constellation Buotis. Now, normally, you wouldn't see this star at all. Even if you're far away from city lights, you need a big telescope to see this star. However, when the nova happens, it will be appearing simply as a new star in the sky as shown here. Look carefully as we blink it on and off so you can see where this new star will appear in the constellation Corona the Crown. Again, this will only be lasting for about a week or less and we don't know exactly when it's going to happen and when the star will brighten. But again, it is expected between now and September. So go outside each clear night and see if you can find Corona Borealis and see if you notice anything brighter in that part of the sky. Because when this star does appear, it will be brighter than the stars of the constellation, but not even as bright as the star Arcturus, the bright orange colored star in Buotis. Check reputable online science websites that don't have sensationalized stories to find out when this nova actually does occur. A good one is a one-page website that's updated every day by astronomers, and that is spaceweather.com. And don't forget, if you can't remember everything I've mentioned in this online edition of Nightwatch, you can check out our online star chart. Just go to our website at adventuresci.org slash starcharts and you can download a monthly star chart to find out what's going on in the sky with even a little bit more detail than what I describe here in this online edition of Nightwatch. And don't forget to visit us here at the Pseudocom Planetarium at Adventure Science Center for our various programs. In the planetarium during July, we present, as always, our regular full-length sky show of Nightwatch under the beautiful night sky of our sky theater. Also Mars, the ultimate voyage, as we find out about a future mission to the red planet and the challenges involved for a long duration space flight. Also we'll be presenting to worlds beyond, journey through the solar system. If you want to learn about our solar system, this is the show to see. Also, laser shows will return to the Planetarium Dome for July, but only during our Red, White, and Boom event on July 4th. During that evening, we'll be presenting Pop Till You Drop and Laser Taylor Swift. See the website about ticketing for our Red, White, and Boom July 4th event and for Planetarium shows that evening. And we hope you can join us here at the Science Center, where our mission is to open every mind to the wonders of science and technology, fostering a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us. And until next time, again, my name is Bill here at the Pseudocom Planetarium, and I wish you clear skies.